Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. I'd like to start today with a little bit from the Ember Day Saturday theme, which is be consoled. But yet notice that there were, if you were keeping up with the readings, we did all of them. It's a beautiful thing, the long jour, Ember Day Mass. But notice it was a lot about consoling, console, do not be afraid. And second of all, there was a mention of the mystery of iniquity and mention of Cyrus. Now, we're in a trial, obviously, in our beautiful country, a great trial for the whole world. This is not just local, it's the whole thing, as you know. It all goes together. And have we caught it soon enough? Has it been revealed soon enough? We knew it was there all along. Come on, we're not dumb. But can we stop this momentum, this lava flow? I don't know. But in a way, I leave it to God. I do my part, he's going to do his. But the Bible, the sacred scriptures, does give us many consoling words. And here's a couple of them. And this is repeated throughout the Old Testament in a number of ways. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. Well, what is that pit ultimately? It's hell. The sinners dig down and they dig and they dig and they dig. They dig themselves a hole. He that diggeth a pit shall fall into it. They dug a big pit for our president. Maybe he's got his own issues, but let's face it. They dug a big pit. Are they going to fall into it themselves? Very likely. Sooner or later they will. And he that setteth a stone for his neighbor shall stumble upon it. And he that layeth a snare for another shall perish in it. This is the infallible word of God. These things happen. The revolution always eats its own. <laughs> These men and women are playing with fire and it will burn them eternally. A mischievous counsel shall be rolled back upon the author. And he shall not know from whence it cometh to him. Have confidence, folks. Be consoled. Even if we don't win this battle, we know we win the war. We may have to suffer for that victory, but we know it'll always be worth it. Let us turn to an earlier phrase from Isaiah today, from Isaiah chapter 7. Ask thee a sign of the Lord, Isaiah said to King Achaz, who was a wicked king, by the way. Thy Lord, ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Let it be deep as the netherworld or as high as the sky. St. Ephraim the Syrian comes to our aid to help us understand the wonder of this prophecy. As we know, the sign that is prophesied to be deep as the netherworld and high as the sky is the word made flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. St. Ephraim first takes note of the incomparable mystery of this sign. He says, by power from him, Mary's womb became able to bear the one who bears all. By the power from him, Mary's womb became able to bear the one who bears all. The saint, in his most wonderful fashion, unfolds the sentence. The womb of Sheol, that's the underworld, the womb of Sheol conceived him and burst open. And how did the womb of Mary sustain him? With his voice, he split stones upon graves. How did Mary's bosom sustain him? So Sheol, meaning death and the underworld, never known, never known to give up its dead, received our Lord on Good Friday. This most secure of fortresses was unable to keep him down for even three days. And yet Our Lady's womb kept him for nine months. Nay, he can still be found there now, as Our Lady of Guadalupe reveals to us. 
Here is a sign that is as deep as the netherworld. How did she do it? What's her secret? St. Ephraim rephrases this wonder in other terms. He says, The womb and Sheol shouted with joy and cried out about your resurrection. The womb that was sealed conceived you. Sheol that was secured brought you forth. Against nature, the womb conceived and Sheol yielded. Sealed was the grave, which they entrusted with keeping the dead man. Virginal was the womb that no man knew. The virginal womb and the sealed grave like trumpets for a deaf people shouted in its ear. So here we see the virginal birth spoken of. Just as our Lord rose from the dead and left a sealed tomb on Easter, he walked through the wall. It was empty when they opened it. So also he first passed through the walls of the virgin womb to be born into this world, leaving her a perpetual virgin. But once again, he makes note of the secure netherworld forced to give up the Savior, contrary to its nature. While the virginal womb conceives contrary to its nature. Here is a sign that is deep as the netherworld. How did she do it? What does it mean? What is her secret? St. Ephraim ponders other signs as well. He says, a wonder is your mother. The Lord entered her and became a servant. He entered able to speak and he became silent in her. He entered her thundering and his voice grew silent. He entered shepherd of all, a lamb he became in her. He emerged bleating. Wow. The God who spoke to Moses on the mountain amidst thunder and lightning that terrified the people at the foot of the mountain. The God who shepherded his people out of Egypt and through the desert to the promised land became a little bleeding lamb in the blessed mother's womb. Little, silent, and vulnerable, able to suffer and die. Here is a sign as high as the sky. How did she do it? How did she tame such supernatural, transcendent, divine forces? King David, it says in the Psalms, the Lord's are the earth and his fullness, the world's and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. The whole world cannot contain him. And yet he comes to enter the virgin and she keeps him. We find the answer to our question as to how she did this by turning to the Canticle of Canticles. We find the answer, love, as strong as death. Love is as strong as death. Jealousy is hard as hell. The lamps thereof are lamps of fire and flames. Many waters cannot quench charity. Neither can the floods drown it. If a man could give all the substance of his house for love, he shall despise it as nothing. Here we find our answer. It is the humble, immaculate, virginal love of Our Lady that is stronger than death and hell. And it draws the living flame of divine love, the Holy Ghost, to enter her womb, where God, so to speak, bankrupted himself and entered, giving all he had to us poor creatures out of love. And he was well pleased to do so on account of this humble, immaculate virgin on her love because of her love. And so because of her, he has never been disappointed in his creation. And so he remains there and can always be found there. Jesus living in Mary. What a lesson this is for us. Humble, virginal, chaste love can draw the Lord and capture him and tame him. Know of a great sinner whose gravity of sin reaches to the depths of hell, whose number reaches to the skies. 
Remember these poor sinners to Our Lady. Through her intercession, they can be converted. Think of this terrible situation we're in. They've dug quite a pit, one of the deepest pits in the history of the world, maybe. Too much to handle, doomed, not for Our Lady. This is also what the sign means. This high as the heavens and as low as hell. There is none like Our Lady who can do these things. Virgin most powerful, pray for us. Spiritual vessel, pray for us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen.